Matt Bernie or Mike Beer taking a look at one of the graded stakes races, scheduled anyway, out at Santa Anita on Saturday afternoon. Race number six, going six and a half furlongs down the hill. It's the grade three La Cienega stakes, and this is a field that, well, before we dive into it, first things first, head on over to bets.drf.com. You can find yourself all sorts of great deals, particularly if you're a new sign-up member, all sorts of good stuff. Bets.drf.com over there. That's where you get all the details for it. Now let's take a look at the field, and now let's give out all sort of caveats before we dive into this race. It sounds like there's quite a bit of rain in the forecast Friday night into Saturday out in Southern California. If that's the case, I have a feeling this is probably going to come off the hillside turf course. If it does not come off the turf course, you see the number five horse is Selcourt. She is not going to run if it stays on. If it comes off, then she'll probably run on a sloppy main track. So you could have a number of changes in this race. We'll go over it right now as is, and we'll just talk about some of the contenders and some of the pretenders in here and hope that this race actually stays on the grass. We'll start off down on the inside with Compelled. Compelled is a really nice filly. I think this is what she's wanted all along, Mike. Her most recent run at Laurel, it came over yielding ground, so if you do get some rain and it stays on for some reason, you know that's not going to be an issue for her. I think she's wanted to sprint on grass all along. If she stays in and this thing stays on, I think she's got a big chance. Yeah, I agree with you. I sort of felt like um, she was just a little bit better sprinting on turf than she is going longer. Not that she hasn't run well going longer, but I, I like her sprinting on the grass. And I thought she ran well last time, a race where it felt like if she didn't drift over behind Fire Key, the eventual winner there in the stretch, um, very briefly she got behind the horse, then she got out again. If she didn't do that, I thought she might have actually won that race. So that was a good performance. If we get yielding ground, I guess you don't have to worry about it. I suppose the main thing to worry about with her, if we're if we are on the turf, is there's not a ton of pace in this race, and the race might not set up great for her. But otherwise, there's a lot to like about her. The form of that race is held up quite well. Also, Fire Key, who you made mention of, the winner, she came back and won next out again with a 95. And the third place finisher came back and earned a 93 buyer. So you at least know the form of that race from Laurel yeah. is holding up. The two fiery lady, let's call a spade a spade. On paper right now, she looks a little bit on the slow side. She'd be the kind of horse that would really appreciate a pace meltdown up on the front end coming from the back. Yeah, I mean, she's just a big outsider in a field like this, though. Cutting back in distance, she's is five for seven on turf overall, which is nice. Her last two wins are for 32,000, though. The number three is Tesora. First time going out for Michael McCarthy for the longest time was with Jonathan Thomas out on the East Coast. Tried the Autumn Miss most recently. She didn't have the cleanest to goes there in that spot. I think you're supposed to just be kind and give her the benefit of the doubt. Draw a line through that. Two starts back. You've got a really impressive effort in the Christie Cat at Belmont Park. She did have a good pace to run at, but I like what she did that day. And again, if this thing stays on, I think she got a big chance. I do too. Um, I'll just give her a pass for the last one. She wasn't winning that race, but she did not have a good trip at all in there. Um, I, I'm, I'm over that trip that she got. I just think she's better sprinting, Matt. Um, she won her second start going long at Del Mar, and she was really impressive doing it. But her best races are sprinting. Three times they sprinted her two wins. As you mentioned, the, the win at Belmont, two back, was a really nice effort. The race at Saratoga was a total toss. They absolutely walked on the lead in front of her. She had no chance and ran a lot better than it looks. This is a pretty talented filly. We talk about horses for courses, particularly going down the hill at Santa Anita. That's exactly what the number four Belvoir Bay is. You see that she is four or five lifetime at six and a half going down the hill. She has a little bit of versatility. She doesn't need the lead, but she can take it if it's given to her. Uh, the most recent run in that Buffalo uh, County Trace or Buffalo Trace, Franklin County, however you want to say it, at Keeneland, <laughs> the five and a half furlong race. thought she came with a nice late bid considering that pace heated up up front. I'm not sold overall on the quality of that race. I know there was a next out winner with a 90 buyer, but there's a part of me that thinks getting back to Southern California with the home cook, and I think that's what she'll appreciate. I agree with all that. I mean, just, you know, based on straight up uh, the races she's run on paper, she's the horse to be in here. I do feel like, you know, as well as she's running her down the hill races, um, I do feel like when you go back to those three races uh, earlier this year, she won three times in a row down the hill. I mean, it was one soft trip after another for her in those races, but she still did what she had to do, and she ran fast races. And I actually think she ran fine um, at Keeneland last time. The trip wasn't perfect. She ran pretty well in there. I think she's the horse to beat. I just want to take a small shot against her. Now, again, this, this race could change dramatically depending on if it stays on, if it comes off. Let's take a look at the pace projector from Timeform US. Right now, they have the five cell court very logically out there on the front end. We know cell court's game. But again, this is all contingent upon if this race comes off, that she is going to stay in the race. If it right. stays on the grass, according to the race advance, she's probably going to be withdrawn. Let's just talk about her for what she is. If she does run and we do see her on Saturday afternoon, the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Sprint was a tough spot off of a long layoff, and there was a lot of heat there in that yeah. race. She felt the effects. She cracked. She finished up the track. 
when she was right early on in 2018, you could make the case that she was the best female sprinter in the country. Yeah, that, that's definitely true. I mean, this is just one of those situations where if we're off the turf, uh, I have no interest in betting against her. She's just supposed to beat this field. Um, obviously, she's not going to run. Because I thought it was odd to see her entered in this race. And I thought it was a terrible sign for her. But it sounds like Sadler's just you know, entered her basically main track only here. And again, this is one of those things you always want to go back and reconsult the time form U.S. pace projector. It will update based on scratches and changes as far as surface is concerned. The six is Miss Southern Miss. Now, Miss Southern Miss is a horse that I really liked her as a two-year-old. I thought she was going to end up being something. She had some issues. They tried her on the main track. She went away for a while. And then she actually ended up running okay going down the hill earlier this year when she first got back on the beam. Unfortunately, since then, the form has been spotty at best, and even one of her better races has left a little bit to be desired. The other problem is she is pretty much void of early speed. Right. I mean, it sounds like we look at her the same way. I was also a fan of hers as a two-year-old, and I guess it just hasn't really all come together for her. Um, I will say that since she's come back off the long layoff uh, for those last three starts, I mean, I just thought she was way up against it in that first start back. They just didn't really go in front of her. The pace was pretty soft. I didn't think she had a real fair chance. But her last two races, they certainly leave something to be desired. She's got to improve a lot to beat this field. The seven is another Tom Proctor trainee. That's last promise kept. This one comes in. She raced in that Catherine Crosby most recently, bet to seven to one. Didn't really do much running. Two starts back, though, you've got a pretty solid effort in the one dreamer out at Kentucky Downs. Now, that's always a tricky thing for me to look at because that Kentucky Downs race is very clearly the best race of her career, and we know that's a little bit of a quirky track. Six and a half furlongs, I don't think that should be much of an issue. I would imagine she comes from farther out of it. I guess I'm just totally – I'm, I'm not totally sold that she is of this caliber just yet. I agree. I don't know if I feel like she's good enough. I don't love her sprinting in a race like this. It feels like she's just facing some better horses. It can work out for horses like her sometimes. She's a big closer. Um, you cut them back to sprint maybe she catches some real pace and she comes running at the end but i didn't like her in this spot lady Subi, i think is going to be an interesting horse going forward let's start off with the formulator fact before we dive into her credentials for john sadler it's not a positive one in a situation like this past four years turf first after the trainer switch over 31 but 12 of them have hit the board so perhaps just a little bit unlucky in some of those instances lady Subi, though and mike you know as well as anyone being mm -hmm. a naira handicapper she did some decent enough things in New York throughout her career. She was with Chad Brown, and we've seen time and time again these East Coast horses go west on the grass and absolutely make hay. I, I don't know about Saturday, should this race stay on, but I right. do wonder if going forward she ends up being okay. Yeah, we'll see what happens with her. I, I, you know, I do feel like she got better on the turf once Chad switched it over. I think she did improve on the grass. Um, I just don't think I love necessarily any one of her turf races as far as comparing it with these, uh, the horses she's going to face on Saturday goes. I mean, she did win her turf debut. She got a really nice trip. It wasn't a particularly compelling performance. She was in that Coronation Cup that we already talked about with Tesora. You know, she got a really nice trip on a very easy pace that day, was not good enough, and then no match for Tesora last time. I don't know. I, I just felt like this was a pretty tough spot for her. If this stays on the grass, you would have to assume the likely pace setter should sell Corp be withdrawn would be the number nine painting corners. You look at that most recent run center to Ken Matty. She was out there setting fractions and time form U.S. had them as 170 and 149. That's about as fast as you're going to find going down the hill. She went 20 and four for the opening quarter and she actually stuck around a little bit. She was only beaten by a length and change. She was the only part of the pace around at the end. Her form has really taken – she was always solid. Yeah. Boy, they put the blinkers on each of those past three starts, and she has really taken her game to the next level. If she ends up being the pace in here, she is very, very dangerous. And yeah, she is. She's really improved in her last three starts. And, again, if Selcourt is not going to run here and we stay on the turf, she looks like she's clear out in front of this field. Maybe she's really tough to run down. Um, I still feel like um, the horse that, that you're going to wind up taking on top in here, Belvoir Bay, I still feel like she might be a little bit better. Um, but this horse has clearly improved. Now, again, can't say it enough. This race could change 15 different ways over the next 48 hours. But assuming it stays on the grass, let's take a look and see ultimately where we went. Mike, you're going to go with the number three to Sora for Michael McCarthy. Again, she did some good things too back in that Christie cat. And if you think that you're going to get a moderate enough pace yeah. anyway, she should be able to come with a run. Yeah, if we stay on the turf here, I am hoping that painting, painting corners is flying on the front end and trying to set this thing up for Tesora.
And I like the horse just to the outside. The captain, obvious horse, Belvoir Bay. She likes the six and a half. She's versatile. She can go to the lead. She can come from off of it. I don't think any kind of cut in the ground would be an issue for her either. But we'll find out. A lot of things can change between now and the time this race is actually run. That's the number, the sixth race, I should say, at Santa Anita on Saturday. The grade three La Cienega is scheduled to go six and a half down the hill. Hopefully it stays on the grass. If it doesn't, they'll run it on the main track, and maybe we'll see Cell Corp. If you're playing this race or any of the races out at Santa Anita on Saturday, DRF Bets is the way to do it. Head on over to bets.drf.com. You can take a look and see. There are all sorts of great deals, particularly for new sign-up members. Scheduled post time for the 6th at Santa Anita. Rain or shine, scheduled right around 6 o'clock Eastern. Good luck.